As Wally Schirra progressed through the first of six orbits planned for his Mercury Sigma 7 spacecraft on October 3, 1962, he felt suddenly warm. Warmer than he expected to feel, based on the long period of training and simulations that he had undergone while preparing for his mission. In itself, the elevated temperature did not present an immediate threat. A similar situation had presented itself during the most recent previous Mercury mission, when medical sensors indicated Scott Carpenter's temperature had climbed to 102 degrees Fahrenheit, although Carpenter himself noticed no change and suggested that the readings may have been in error. In Shiraz's case, there were additional reasons for worry. For one, at the start of his flight, the engine of his launch vehicle had fired longer than planned, the extra 10 seconds seemed an acceptably brief period, but the error had resulted in the Sigma-7 spacecraft being elevated to a higher-than-expected orbit. It would, in fact, be the highest orbit of any of the Mercury program. While there was no obvious correlation between the unexpected orbit and the unexpected temperature reading, the sheer novelty of the flight which was just the fifth piloted spaceflight of the Mercury program, gave NASA medical personnel plenty of reason to worry as they looked for an explanation. An additional concern arose from the context in which the mission was flown, as Shiraz Sigma-7 flight was being conducted just slightly more than two months after the detonation of a nuclear weapon in the atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean. The possibility that radiation from the nuclear test could pose a threat to Shira was bolstered by the fact that the batteries of several satellites had failed in the days and weeks following the detonation. Although they were certain that all available evidence pointed to an acceptably small risk of radiation exposure for the Sigma-7 pilot and his spacecraft, NASA engineers hedged their bets by outfitting both Shira and his spacecraft with equipment designed to measure the amount of radiation that each would absorb as the flight progressed. Despite the wide-reaching nature of the concerns about his well-being, Shira would not be deterred by the difficulties involved in trailblazing a path into space. He maintained a remarkably disciplined focus on the tasks he had been assigned and carefully responded to each issue that arose in the long training leading up to the flight and during his time in orbit. Aware that the high temperature readings could lead mission managers to consider cutting short his pioneering space flight, Shira made a series of gradual adjustments in the cooling system within his spacesuit. His methodical approach to lowering the temperature allowed him to gauge the effect of each adjustment and enabled medical personnel to track the steadily improving situation. As a result, Wally Shira was able to complete his mission profile as it was originally envisioned. When he returned to Earth, just over nine hours after he'd lifted off, he emerged from his Sigma-7 Mercury capsule calm and cool, in good health and good spirits. He had completed six orbits of the Earth, twice as many as the U.S. space program had previously accomplished during a spaceflight, and recorded what would ultimately be the fastest speed and highest orbit of any of the six missions of Project Mercury. For his effort, he received the accolade of having his mission characterized by NASA administrators as a textbook flight, the ultimate compliment for all those who, in that first era of space exploration, sought to make the process of traveling in the heavens a routine experience.